Hey, it's your boy Boss Cowboy hey, Sports. Hey, 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 and we finna recap week one. Hey, hey, yeah, man. Hey, so y'all sit back, man. I slept on it. It's gonna be worth hey, it. Hey, Let's chill out. Let's go. And I put it on Cedars. All I got is certified Trump beaters. Charge a couple cool K for the features. It ain't about the money, then you probably can't reach us. Hey, and I put it on mamas. Do it for the soul, for the family. Tryna pay me like a new guy But I'm buzzing in the apple like a fruit fly mm. I be somewhere in Seattle getting neck bone mm. And I'm really not the one that you should rest on Uber eat Jamaican to the b and All the moves we making ain't seeing me Rooftop bar for the scenery I give a fuck about a mug and what it mean to me I'm that saucy little d- from the middle map Told her baby box it for me, she gon' dribble that Got some in the paper, got it mummy rap Got no m- Minutes for the funny act, hey. hey And I put it on Cedars All I got is certified Trump beaters Charge a couple cool K for the features It ain't about the money, then you probably can't reach us Hey, and I put it on mamas Do it for the soul, for the fam and the commas Don't act, be chill with the dramas All you gotta do is be you and be honest Monastery on the front of middle, man What you know about it, baby, riddle that Heard a lot of rapping, very little fact You the type of that we giggle at Go all on my mind, look like a chandelier I'm about to disappear and make a hundred grand appear I'm about that cash money stunting like my daddy Out in public, let me poke it on the patio Couple shots of Henny, baby, I'm with Henny thing And if that run up on me, let the sing I'm playing 2K with that Duce in my double phone This for my clients, baby, hit me on my other phone Stripe magic jersey like I'm hard away. I used to sweat for my money, found a smarter way. I hop out fresher mm. than I'm, I'm like, what's happening? In? No, you can't hold me, I'm busting out the packaging. Hey, and I put it on. Are y'all still cowboy fans? Or does free week one of free agent didn't take your heart? Come on. I wanna know. Are you still a cowboy fan today? Can you ride when it get hard? When you don't know, can you ride? Mm. Let's go, man. All right. So we go get right into it today. Uh, you know, because last week we prepared for free agency and the first week of free agency uh so we had we started what's all in and looking at it this ain't looking like what most people would consider all in obviously but most of us knew he wasn't gonna be all in anyway but Week one is looking kind of all out. But is it? Is it really all out? That's the question. Because I think we kind of looking at it wrong because I slept on it and uh, in sleeping on it. It looks like it's all out. It looks like a rebuild. It's not a rebuild at all. I'm going to tell you what I really think going on after really sleeping on week one and just taking my time, taking my time. My boy D.A. Lee say facts. So if my boy D.A. Lee say facts after get that must be saying something good. So, uh, what it, yeah. So I'm going to tell you what it looked like to me. It's the red shirts time. And see, I don't think a lot of us looking at it like that. We looking at it like what we doing, right? Especially when you look at the exits that's happening real fast. Let me let me pull all the weeks real quick. I thought I had it pulled. I didn't. Let me pull it real quick and I'm explaining. Y'all give me one second. 
right. So that's day one. I got all the days, y'all. So I've been keeping up day by day. <laughs> so I'm going to break this down. Day by day. All right. And we're going to talk through it. We're going to talk through it, and I'm going to break it down what I really think is going on. All right. Okay. So last week we started like so. Looking at our current free agents, right? So by the next day, it was early and it was fast. Day one of the uh, tampering period, the legal tampering period. Immediately, our guys went off. Pollock, boom. Biotish, boom. Armstrong, boom. And uh, most of us say this, well, if you think about it, if you was ready to go by the first day of the legal tampering period, that likely mean you was tampered with. Yeah, so that's a clue of Quinn and his dirty work, tampering. So then day two, we lost our Armstrong. And I'm talking about free agency ain't even, not Armstrong, Fowler. And free agency ain't even started at this point. And Katz is steadily going out the door. Then on day three, we pick up Eric, which we pulled him off a plane going to San Fran. At a very dirt cheap deal. And we lost Neville. So then we signed some of our guys, right? Jordan Lewis, he's back at a dirt cheap deal. Yep. And it's, it makes a lot of us feel weird to see Jordan Lewis done and Gilmore not done. Cause see, they like to talk about we, our definition of all in is getting four players for one. Well, some players are actually worth one player for two, if that makes sense. Right. So out of the secondary that was available, what would be the priority if you're really trying to go all in? Yeah. It would have been Gilmore, but we didn't. You know, our guys get preference here. And then it was the news of an era over with. Where officially Tyron Smith is gone. Now, it's some debate on that. It's a lot of debate. I'm on the side that he was a progress stopper. But it's a lot of people that disagree. They wanted him. They feel like we tackle this. I feel like we not tackle this. I feel like we got to tackle. Like sitting right in our bread basket, for real. Yeah, we got to tackle. We got to tackle that I already played tackle. So I'm not really tripping on Tyron Smith at all. You know, now if you think we don't have a tackle where you tripping, you at your mind, you you going, you losing it. But I'm not. But this is another one of those what? The future is now. It's the red shirts time, and he's one. And so when you really look at it, it's not all out. It's just that they washing out. They washing out some of these guys. So, and this is the latest news. We just lost Noel to Dan Quinn again. 
So it it I don't care what nobody say, man. It looked like Dan Quinn knew who was disgruntled. Because if I was Noah, I would be extremely disgruntled because I came over and signed with the Dallas Cowboys and I was treated like a bastard. Yeah. So when I look at it, I see something else going on. I don't think it's all out. It's definitely not all in. It's more so betting on the red shirts. See, because again, last year we said on the draft show, and think about it, we said it was a futures draft. And we specifically said, I can show you the clips, where we said we drafted to fire people in the future. I specifically said that. <laughs> last year's draft was about firing people into the future. Yeah. So that's what they're doing right now. So when you go look at the list, right? You look at defensive end and you'll say, damn, we wiped out. No, we not. We really not. It depends on how you look at it. If you look at it from depth, it's obviously that they betting on the young guys. Yeah. So what are they really doing? What did we say last year? They drafted to fire people into the future. We said it last year. So the future is here. Where Stephen Jones, Will McClay, and Jerry are saying, we don't have to pay these guys. Because we drafted for their replacements last year. Yeah. So you look at two defensive ends going out the door. But then you can look at it and say two defensive ends are getting ready to have to step up. And they love saying that. What do they always say? One of these young guys go have to step up. One of these old young guys go have to step up. So if you look at what we missing and what we let out the door, right? And then you look at what's here, you can really see what they're really doing. See, they ain't lying. They're all in version is going with the drafted guys. So the way that I see it is that the red shirt time, especially if you break it just line by line, you lose Tyron Smith, but you have a red shirt, a reserve ready to go. You lose all your defensive ends, but you got their backups basically ready to go. You lose your center. So guess what? Hoffman is ready to go. You lose Tyron Smith. Your swing is now ready to go. At least that's how they getting ready to play it. And I'm going to be honest with you, man. I think we got to sit back and watch it. Because this is bold. This is bold. This take this takes courage. This takes a lot of courage to say, okay, we drafted some guys a year early, anticipating that we was go get them in our program. We was go get them that that NFL regimen, that NFL diet. We was go give them some small reps. But just to get them on the field, just to get let them feel it. Because we gonna be asking big shoes of these guys next year. This is a massive bet. This is a massive bet. 
And see, Oscar, I'm not mad at this because this could end up playing like this. Just being honest, it could play out just like you just said, bro. My boy said, hold on real quick. Hold on, let me show Oscar comment. He got a good, good comment here. Hold on. Hold on real quick. Y'all give me a second, man. I'm trying to show my boy comment. Because I like what he said. Okay. All right, there it is. My boy Oscar said, bold and stupid are, are near the same line, though. Yeah, it is. Because this plan is putting massive pressure on Will McClay. I'm gonna talk about that in just a second. But this plan is putting massive pressure because a lot of us are not excited because we don't know the future of these young guys. We don't. But I'm also being honest to say, we do gotta let this play out. Because if they write, this was, man, this was bold to draft a year early to have guys ready to go by the time some of the other guys you was anticipating going out it's bold it's actually big nuts it's not baby nuts it take big nuts to do that you putting a big 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 gamble on red shirts But what I fear, though, is a lot of this is the ego of Stephen Jones. That's what I fear. That's what I fear. It's his ego. It's where he trying to be right. Uh, and really trying to what he calls build through the draft. Because if you look at it, it's not even building. It's replacing. He ain't building. Yeah, this is not building. This is only replacing through the draft. So at some point, I actually want him to stop saying we build through the draft because we actually don't. We're only replacing through the draft. Yeah, if you just look at it, what what do we just talk about? We can even start from the top. Michael Gallup. Who's the replacement for Michael Gallup right now? Hmm. Who's the red shirt to take over for Michael Gallup? Hmm. Yeah, that's Jalen Tobin. Mm-hmm. And they finna roll it out. They finna roll every bit of this out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So every one of the people we lost, if you really look close, it's a red shirt guy sitting right underneath them. And to us, most people said Tobit, somebody snuck in Brooks. I like that. Yeah, because like we said, last year was a red shirt draft. They, was, they drafted to replace guys. They were replacing them now. You can't tell me no different. Like, especially if you look at it day for day. Let's look at it day for day one more time. Let's look at it day for day one more time. Day one, exits. Day two, exits. <laughs> Come on now. Day three, you get a lucky signing, but more exits. Yeah. But if you break it down, there's a backup or a red shirt behind every one of these guys. Literally, every one of them. Who's, who's sitting behind Tony Pollard. Who was the red shirt for Tony Pollard? Deuce. Yep. Like if I'm telling you, if you go line by line, it looks all out, but it's really not. It's more so they're betting that these young guys getting ready to step up. 
Yeah. And it's basically bidding on and putting a massive bet on Will McClay and DA late. I feel you, bro. I feel you. this, this emoji is perfect. <laughs> I feel you, bro. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, 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 man. Woo. <laughs> <laughs> oh man yeah so but i see what they doing i see what they doing is it smart we gonna see but i definitely will say it's bold it's definitely bold i gotta give them nate i gotta give them they 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 flowers on boldness is you got some big on us to try this you literally going into the NFL. You trying to tr you trying to act like you Florida State or oh, you trying to act like the Alabama when it was at its heyday, where they had so many starters, they was able to take just all world talent and just let it develop. Damn, I mean y'all just draft that good. Oh wow. Well, we finna see. Cause that's exactly how they move it. And this is the, the thing. Steven Jones is going to let this whole thing play out. He ain't going to rush it. If they struggling, he going to want them to struggle. He is going to put full faith and a full bet on them young guys and them drafted guys. Yes. So the lesson one that I'm seeing yeah d block d block i think you hit it my boy cft in the building he always say this and i believe it arrogance yeah it's basically time will mcclay's hand behind his back and say i want you to win me a super bowl with drafted guys yeah it's arrogance but i'm gonna give him a chance Cause I'm also turn around and say I was wrong. If it worked, I'm gonna turn around and say, Hey bro, listen, they went with their plan. They went with the drafted guys. These bars are balling. We was wrong. <laughs> but my gut tells me. Hell no. Oh, hell no. I ain't, I ain't. Yeah, it's 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 a big bet. So that's number one. Number one, the red shirts of time. That's what I see from week one. That it's the red shirts time. That it looks like to us, oh, they not doing anything. No, they did it last year. So, and we finna watch it play out. See, this is what scares me about Stephen Jones, though. When you start looking at the red shirts some red shirts i feel good about don't y'all feel good about overshine he should make you feel good right you know i even feel pretty good about clark i feel like if he can you know learn his keys better the game can slow down for him athletically i always like clark i do like mozzie taking over for gilmore in year two i do like that i think he go take a jump that's just me i think he go take a jump he's a good replacement for gilmore but then there are certain red shirts that stephen jones scare me with because some of them are obvious that you probably should have gave up on a long time ago especially ball but because he one of your guys, you gonna still say, let's see what the young guys can do. <laughs> yeah. My boy CFT said, I don't like Clark. I like Clark at the wheel, not at the mic. I agree. I agree. And I know why you saying that. I think the less he thinks, the better. I think he reacts better. 
you know, just that's just me. And I've always said that about him too. I put that in the boss cowboy guy that he's seems to di- diagnose slow. So I said that before he was even a cowboy. Um, yeah, I feel you on that CFT, and I know exactly why you're saying that. I see it the same way, bro. But see, you know, it's it's see Matt with let's go, that scares me, scares me, scares me. Why? He's the Amari Cooper fifth round pick. If it's anybody that they would try to force to be right, Matt Walesco. And it's already looking at Skeptical Fan, you right. We do need Gilmore back. We do. But you could already see the signs of forcing it on him. They put him on the roster, even though it was obviously he dislocated his shoulder. Just forced him. They should have red shirted him, period. Then it happened again. The next year. Most fifth rounders with two broke shoulders that you really never got a good look at in preseason would have been gone. Just through natural competition, just just based on, man, I, I didn't see enough to keep you. But he's one of our guys and he is the Amari Cooper fit. So Steven is not gonna quit. Bruh. He's going to give him another chance. See, that's the scary thing about these all uh, our guys. So, I also want to say this. My observation of week one. It's a major disdain for free agents with the Dallas Cowboys. I think it's deeper than what we think. See, some people looking at our lack of activity like we don't want to spend money. It's not even the money with some of these. I think it's Stephen Jones wanting to build his team through the draft. To where he have a disdain for free agents. I look at it like a disdain. All right. Let me make the case on that. Y'all give me one second. Y'all give me one second. <laughs> there we go. I'm having to position some stuff, y'all. Y'all just give me a couple of more seconds to get this stuff right, cleaned up, then I'm ready. All right, here we go. <clears throat> so, fish. put this out he said good old Dion day syndrome top five Cowboys all-time free agency signings right now keep in mind Dion was probably the best free agent signing of all time with the Dallas Cowboys all time he is still today the best cornerback to ever play the game we acquired not only the best corner the best corner to ever play 
Dion was a two sport athlete which professional so what what ball skills so good that this man could play professional baseball <laughs> Dion would have made the Hall of Fame if he never played corner a day in his life. Let me say that again. Dion would have made corn, I mean, made the Hall of Fame if he never played corner a day in his life. You can't handle the truth. He was that gifted as a return guy. You want answers? He would have made the Hall of Fame on just kickoff and punt return. You can't handle the truth. And guess who didn't want it? And was angry when he was signed. Steven Jones. He was so mad when we signed Dion that he jacked up Jerry against the wall. That's who we dealing with y'all. We dealing with somebody so so in love with his idea that even when talent like Dion is in his face and saying, I want to come over and get y'all over the hump, he says, Oh, hell no. It's a, it looks like to me, uh, outright disdain for free agents. And this is what I said. I said, uh, there was only one Cowboy fan in the world who hated the prime signing. His name is Steven Jones. Jacked up Jerry over. Can, uh, just, uh, I, uh, I'm just trying to imagine how in the world was anybody angry at that signing? So Dallas at that time had just won two Super Bowls. San Francisco messed up the three peat that Dallas should have won. They should have three peat. They should have four peat. Dion was playing for San Fran and was a major reason they won the game on Dallas. So to take Dion was weakening San Fran and strengthening your team. And Steven was still mad. Oh, hell no. It's a core trait that he has to where he did. He has literally no sense of when to go forward he had he is he he literally has no sense on when to go forward like there would never be any free agent more obvious than dion and if he didn't want dion can you understand now how he has no sense of what it would take and what to do to get us over the hump. He's so bogged down in numbers and budgets and the, the cap of 2025 and the cap in 2026. I gotta pay all these guys. I, I, what am I gonna do? And I want to build it this way because it's safer. I want to build through the draft because it's safer. I can control my budget. So this is more evidence of it. So Clarence Hill, you know, did the Dallas Cowboys speak with Derek Henry? 
Oh, hell no. What? You didn't even inquire? Oh, hell no. Man, that's a that's a disdain for free agency. See, do y'all remember it came out where they were saying early in the offseason? Do y'all remember early in the offseason they were saying that it was a well-known free agent and they came to Steven about it and he was like, who? And people thought that he didn't know who that person was. So they was like, Steven is stupid. He's stupid. No, he, no. He knew who that person was. He was just basically being funny. Who? Yeah. You know how people do when they trying to say you're nobody. Who? Zeke who? Being funny. See, a lot of people think, oh, they just not active in free agency. No, it's a disdain for free agents. It's a disdain. And most people not talking about it at all. They just talking about, uh, you know, Dallas is not, we know Dallas is not active in free agency. We all know that. We all know that. Come on now. We all know that. Now it's deeper than that. If you go look at the history of Stephen Jones, the treatment of Dion, what just happened with Derrick Henry, the top free agent running back, you don't have nobody even gave this man a call no due diligence at all hmm. bruh and so this is what i said there is a lack of activity and due diligence for the dallas cowboys and free agency for prospective free agents because free agents are considered outsiders See, nobody really, see, we should be saying this loud and together. This should be the last year I'm saying this loud by myself. This should be the last year that I'm saying it loud by myself. There's a lack of activity and due diligence for the Dallas Cowboys and free agents for prospective free agents because free agents are considered outsiders. And let me ask you a question. Let's just use our common sense. Can you name any other team that says our guys? And let's also use our common sense one more time. If you on a team and you hearing our guys, doesn't that mean other guys are not your guys huh. so this group over here is our guys but you over there you're not huh. so we looking at it wrong we over here thinking dallas is just they just don't shop in free agency week one they don't like to shop at all for any free agents even when they have good deals on them. I think he doing what he did when he was younger. He jacking Jerry up against the wall. I want to do it my way, dad. Dad, I want to do it my way. I don't believe in, I didn't believe. Why did you sign Dion for all of that money? Why did you do that, Dad? Bruh. I believe we can do it a different way, Dad. And it's scary when you're dealing with people like Steven because people like Steven, bless his heart, when you from Jerry, when have you ever had to humble yourself? When did you ever have to compromise? When did you ever have to take a back seat to somebody else? You never did because of your daddy. 
So people like him that's raised super privileged to where your whole life, everywhere you went, everywhere you go, everybody caters to you. Everybody, yes, sir, what do you want? How, yes, sir, how many you want? How many people at the table? Everybody clear out. The Joneses are here. Everybody get out of here. The Joneses. It's everything caters around them. So sharing. Nah. Share? Oh, hell no. Nah. What you? Oh, hell no. It's all about me, 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 me. My idea, my, 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 my. I believe we can do it through the draft. If we can just get Will McClay to get us some good draft picks, we don't have to pay these guys. <laughs> it's a disdain for free agents. And I said, this will really piss off some Cowboy fans, especially after winning 12 games three years in a row. So, Dante Fleming basically did a macro study. The teams to spend the most money in free agency each of the last five seasons all increased their wins by at least three from the previous season. Yeah. So you increase your, so what is this study is showing that there's a correlation to aggressive investment and wins. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Wait, 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 it's almost like nepotism isn't the best way to run an organization. <laughs> uh, so, so this study in NFL research is showing that there's a correlation to off-season investment and wins. So we don't win 12 and five, three years in a row, but yet we still refuse to make not even big investments, almost any free agent investment. I mean, some of this stuff could pull us over. Like we could have did something like get soup, but we don't like free agents. So no, nah, we go stick with our guys. Yeah. So, cause see, let me say something too about myself. Just keeping it real. So far after week one, your boy boss was. You are fake news. Wrong. I was super wrong. Ooh, I was wrong. I was wrong. Can you blame me though? Cause they were saying they was gonna go all in, right? So I was thinking they was gonna go all in the way that they went all in last year. Last year, they're all in as they made some trades for some late round draft picks, but you got you some good players. <laughs> Dallas, and those deals was done after the first week. I mean, because it works so well, most people, when things work well, what do you do when things work well? Do you abandon it or do you double down? Hmm. So you gave up some late round draft picks, but you got some guys that made your team better right now. I thought they was going to do that again because it worked. Even when Diggs went down, it wasn't Bland that became your number one corner. It was Gilmore. Yeah, it wasn't the drafted guy that they put on DK Met Metcalf. It was Gilmore. 
It wasn't your drafted guys that was the best run stoppers. It was your bastard. It was Hankins. Even though, even though you even under targeted him, when you did target him, Cook showed up. I just thought you was going to do what worked again. That's what I thought. But I end up being wrong in week one. We gonna see what happened in week two, but in week one, I was clearly wrong. Cause they they didn't even make no trades at all for no talent, no work, even though it clearly worked. When Jonathan Hagins was playing, the run defense would average a whole yard less. Yeah. So I just assumed because it worked, you you would be smart to do it again. But nope, nope, nope. Yep, nope. They they are also considered bastards. So even when it worked, because there's a disdain for free agents, they don't want them. Yeah, it's a dis it's a disdain. He just like he was with Dion. Daddy, daddy, why you get Dion? I feel like we could have did it cheaper, daddy. Cause he a way better player, you goofy ass. <laughs> but we could have got cheaper, daddy. Daddy, what? You didn't have to go get. You not go find no Dion's for cheap, you moron. But daddy, I think if you budget right, we gonna be able to get two for one. You ain't gonna find five corners in a lifetime to equal one Dion. Huh. Go sit down, son. Yep. Yep. So, I mean, I'm seeing it just a little bit different. Just like week one i just see it a little bit different yep i see a disdain i really do i see a disdain for free agents it's even worse now it's even worse than i thought so i said i was gonna bring this up this is the best time This is putting massive pressure on Will McClay. Massive. And I have a real question. <clears throat> and I want y'all to hear me out. Will he grow tired? Is he already tired? Will he grow tired? Is he already tired? What do I mean? To me, there is no better GM in the whole NFL than Will McClay. Will McClay, if you really look closely, is so ready that he bring in, in Marshall's free agents, usually from an emergency plan. Meaning, when the draft guys don't work, he got to step in and fix it. What happened with Amari Cooper? Wide receiver by committee wasn't working. Who went and got that deal? LVE was playing bad. Who went and got Evans? They was putting all that stock in James Washington. 
They gave him chance after chance after chance after chance after chance. He got on the field, took a hit, then come back. Will, on emergency purposes, just went out there and got them T.Y. Hilton. Our goofy self was betting on ball to be a swing. Just goofy. Who went out there and got Jason Peters, another Marshalls? So let me ask you a question, because this is my gut feeling about Will McClay. This goes sound like duh when I say it. But Will McClay is a football guy through and through. His kids are getting older too. See, sometimes you'll stay put in a toxic company until your, your kids are older, until your kids go off to school. Because you like the environment that you had around them, and that you have around them. So while you're molding them, most fathers are gonna want some consistent structure as much as possible. But see, his kids are getting big. They're getting big. And just like Dan Quinn, how long am I gonna sit here and let y'all waste my legacy? I know some people that played for him when he was a coach for the Dallas Desperados. Hammond Milligan. Will Pettis. Will Pettis was his best player. I know both of them boys personally. Both of them love Will as a coach and football mind. Bruh. So how long you go build teams twelve and five, twelve and five, twelve and five, and they get wasted on your boss trying to be right about drafted guys. At what point does he say? I'm just keeping it real, y'all. I know a lot of y'all think he go keep taking those pay raises. Nah. It does get to a point to where you can't buy me. I'm wasting my legacy under you. Bruh. We should have two rings in the last three years. If you was willing to go even, not all in, just don't treat free agents like bastards. Don't run off the guys I brought in. Yeah. So this plan is always keeping constant pressure on Will McClay. The pressure on Will McClay is massive. His scout team, based on the way they just letting talent go, they have to nail this draft. The only good news is Will McClay have been nailing the drafts. And it's another thing that's going on that makes me fear that within the next three years, we gonna probably see him leave. It's another thing that's going on that make me, I'm, and I'm just being honest, I'm just using my common sense, reading the tea leaves on why I think he's gonna leave. 
See, because I noticed what them Joneses are doing. See, what them Joneses are doing. They trying to groom their grandson to be the personnel guy of the future. If you notice these last couple of drafts, they almost go out, out their way not to give Will McClay credit. Y'all better peep game. What did Jerry say? You, you couldn't really tell who made the pick. Hmm? You, you really couldn't tell. We were such in the flow. Uh, we were, you, you could. But then when his son has something to do with Overshawn, oh, they quick. Oh, Junior, Junior, he was in on that Overshawn. Junior, it was Junior that told us about him. It was, it was Junior. It was Junior. Bruh, we all been in them organizations where it's clearly where they trying to get this young bull to take over for you in the future. All of us been in these corporate environments to where they, these executives got a vision to replace you and they show it. They show it. Oh, Junior, Junior. Like, bro, I've been doing all this work. I've been rescuing the hell out this team and y'all badass decision. It was y'all that won a receiver by committee. I went out there and I, I got them groceries. Then when it went to hell, I went out there and got you Amari Cooper. And now y'all don't even want to say my name. Oh, you can't even tell who made the pick. Oh, you can't even tell. You, you can. Because I don't believe for one minute not even for one second that Will McClay believed the best way to win a championship is by doubling down on draft picks. Oh, hell no. His football eyes way too good. His football common sense way too good. Now, is he toting the company line? Yep. But... Would he rather be Dan Quinn right now where he could go to a failed operation like Washington and do it his way? I bet you, I bet you, yeah. Let me ask y'all a question. If Will McClay was responsible for just getting talent, just talent, not make sure you draft the talent, just get him in the building. Then we go let them compete. We go let the cream rise to the top. What would the Dallas Cowboys be if Evans didn't have to go through the politics? If Avion Collins didn't have to go through the politics? If Fowler didn't get to have to go through the politics, if Amari Cooper didn't have to go through the politics, if all our free agents was just not treated like bastards, how good would Dallas be? Yeah, I don't see Will McClay stand. No, I don't see him messing up his own legacy. I see him saying, you know what, at some point, if I if I want to build a name for myself, I got to get away from these dudes. <laughs> My kid's grown. I'm out of here. You can't handle the truth. Yep. And that's when Dallas will crumble to hell. Because I'm going to do a video in the near future. Because Will McClay is the only reason we relevant. <laughs> this is the last thing I'm going to say. Then I'm going to get to these super chats, text and calls.
why would Dak invest into this? Team freely for what? All right, let me play this and we go talk about it. Like, it makes literally no sense to invest into this. Hold on, let me listen to this. I'll give me one second. All right, here we go. I don't look at it as the next few weeks. I look at it as, you know, all the way up and up and through the season in terms of, uh, you know, how we continue to address this. And, you know, just as we all see that first day, uh, first negotiating day, uh, you know, it's, it's wild and it's and it's big, big, big dollars. And uh... he actually right. He actually right. I said the same thing. The first three days was sucker day a lot of overspending that was going on he right on that I was, and the way that i saw it it's almost like when you put chicken and hot grease for the first time what happened <laughs> and then it settles right and then it start cooking at a normal speed but when you first put fresh chicken and hot grease <laughs> yeah that's free agency he right on that uh, but then, uh, as you see now, things are calming down. And, uh, you know, that's where we think. And see, that's the market in which he liked to shop in. He don't like to shop where it's aggressive, fast. And he liked to shop after the market has settled down. Right. But I think it's not even that because they weren't shopping at all. They, they weren't, you saw, they weren't even on the phone. So they was they weren't calling people hardly. Yeah. So you could talk all you want. It was some overspending. Now, now it was some deals out there too, but y'all decided y'all not gonna even go to the store. Yeah, like you didn't even try to go look for the. Yeah. You didn't even go call and say, "Hey, man, you want to end your your career in Dallas?" You y'all know we ain't paying a lot, but. If you want to go out strong, this would be a good place. And, you know, you can be efficient and, and do do good things. I think we have in the past, and whether it's via a trade or whether it's via just a, uh, like we did yesterday with uh, Kendricks. I'm sure there'll be more players released around. He right on that. There's ways to be efficient. Yeah, he was right. He was right. They was efficient last year ain't nobody was mad at them deals last year the problem is you're not doing it so far this year week one had nothing nothing It's more about like you trying to get everybody. It's like, it's like he take pride in getting over on people. Uh, as people move forward and uh, work with, within their cap. So you never know what you might see that you don't see today. So uh, those are all things that we feel very prepared uh, to make quick decisions on. And uh, I look forward to it. So basically what he's saying is, if it's a deal to where somebody's screwing themselves, they they ready to move. <laughs> if it's a deal to where like Jordan Lewis, oh, I mean that's everybody certainly on. has that right. I mean, yeah. If it's one of them deals, oh, they ready. Like, look how fast they jumped on that Jalen Smith deal. Why? Because it was a bad deal for him. But listen, we, uh, you know, I know where the frustration is. The fact that we haven't uh, had success in the playoffs, 
uh, to their satisfaction. Until we do that, then, uh, you know, the critic. And see, this is where Steven is out of touch. People not mad. All this anger is not just because we lost in the playoffs. That's where he just out of touch. That's where that ivory tower, you can't see why people are, people not mad that we lost. People mad that you keep trying to do the same shit after we lost. That you, instead of going, instead of saying, you know what? Let's be a little bit aggressive this time. You no no no. You doubling down on no. Let's let's replace all these dudes through the draft. That's what's pissing us off. And then y'all doing these word games with all in. It's these word games. That's what's pissing us off. See, like toxic people do that. Like you trying to work it out with your lady and you're saying, baby, our relationship would be better if you didn't talk to me with that tone. You talk to me like I'm your son. You just need some pussy. No, no, no. no I told you specifically what the problem is. You just need my loving. That's all you need. See, that's what he doing. Oh, they just want to win. No, we telling you what we don't like, Steven. We don't like this passive style. We don't like you cowering and, and other teams being aggressive and you are hardly ever aggressive. That's what's pissing us off. Oh, they just, you know, they just mad because we didn't get over the hump. No. Nah, we mad at you being scary. That's what we don't like, Steven. But see, that's that toxicity. Where they tell you what your problem is instead of listening to the fans. We'll tell you what we pissed at. We'll tell you. Yeah. Yeah, like, like look what Ratio said. Yeah. You think they would try to change something after 29 years of clownering? No, business. See, that's what's pissing people off. It's the business as usual that's pissing off people. Baby, our relationship would be so much better if you talk with a better tone. You just want a sandwich. You just grumpy. No, I told you to talk. To me with a certain tone you don't mean that it's toxic like we telling you we we don't like the way that you keep favoring these draft guys it's toxic and that's why we so mad like think about it there would there is no fan base that would that that should be angry at 12 and five, three years in a row. Most teams will be like, oh yeah, man, shit. We all right. We won 12 games. We did it three years in a row. We bringing most of these balls back. We need to make us a couple of tweaks and we go be there. See, we don't trust you to make the tweaks. See, right now we looking at you setting up all these red shirts. Where you should be tweaking, you over here doing another experiment. Here come one of these old Stephen Jones experiments. Last year we drafted for all of these guys to take their jobs. We got to let that play out. Yeah, Stephen Jones experiments all over again. Yeah, we need a light break. Let's take us a quick light break, man. Y'all burning your boy again. Let's take us a quick light break. We got 200 people watching right now. Uh, I usually don't go live around this time, but hey, I had to get it out the way today. Just one of them days.
Yeah, but man, let's hit them likes, man. Let's get them likes up. Yep. Let's go ahead and get that going, y'all. Let's get that going. Y'all been doing good on the likes, though. I ain't fussing at y'all. Y'all good. Even if you're on Facebook, man, hit them likes. Especially if you're a routine. You've been here a minute. You already know what that does. But yeah, man, that's that toxicity, man. Oh, these other fans, they're just mad because we didn't get over the hump. No, they mad at you, man. They mad at y'all with these games. It, it ain't that we ain't get over the hump. It's the fact that we the only goofy-ass team that still negotiate through the media on a quarterback that was runner-up MVP. That's what pisses us off. Oh, they, 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 no, they, no, they, no, 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 they just mad because we get, no, no, we mad at how y'all do stuff, man. We mad at your tone. No, you just need some loving. No, I don't want no loving, man. I already told you that. Watch your tone, girl. <laughs> Why are you fussing at me? Because you ain't listening. Uh, is certainly uh, uh, something that's going to be there. And we know that's going to be there, but uh, we're going to stick with what we believe will ultimately uh, get us a championship uh, here. We're going to stick with what we believe will ultimately get us. We're going to stick with what we... We go stick with what we go stick. That's called stubborn. You go stick with it. We go stick with what we believe for our fans. But uh, uh, you know, we don't define all in as what you sp uh, spend in free agency. It's keeping you know the core, keeping some of the great players in this league, like Dak Prescott, like uh, C.D. Lamb, like Micah Parsons, like Diggs. Uh, you know, that's what we define as all in. As that's what we define as all in. Okay. Well, thanks for being clear. But the problem is, not boss was wrong. I already said I was wrong. Why would Dak invest into this? Like, why would Dak invest into this? You just said, we go do it our way. We ain't go get no... Uh, so why would I be team friendly if you're not going to invest outside of our guys? See, now some of y'all goes. Because listen, if I'm if I'm listening to what he just said, why would I give you a team friendly deal? Because you just admitted you're not going to do anything but try. Try to pay your own guys with it. And sometimes you paid the wrong guys. Oh, hell no. So I give you a team friendly deal and you say, let's go pay Gallup and let Amari go. Why would I give you a team friendly deal to do something like that bruh why would i invest into your brains see i could see if i gave you a team friendly discount and you went out there and you got a lot of talent around me okay we we, we talking now but you just admitted our version of all in is to just pay our guy so if your whole goal is just to get us paid and you ain't going to do nothing, hardly anything with free agents, then what's the whole use of me giving you a discount? See, ain't nobody can answer that question for all the people. Dak is a greedy mofo. Dak is greedy. Dak is holding the team hostage. No, he's not. The man just told you our version of all in is just paying our guys. We're not doing anything outside. We're not going to make splashes. We don't do that. We won't do that. At best, we go have a late trade 
with some older players at best at best why would I give you a discount when you take a fourth round and you trade it for a third string quarterback oh hell no so I'm just breaking down just all the stuff I slept on I don't see no reason why any one of us if we're using common sense now if we just angry and we just talking stupid and we just talking in emotion we calling Dak a greedy mofo and all the stupid stuff we say then yeah blame that but if you just listen to what Steven said, nobody in good faith would ever say, yeah, give them a discount. They go do the right thing. Anybody with common sense would say, bro, listen, get all the money you can because them, them fools go blow it. They go blow it. This is the last thing I'm going to say before I take these super chats. This gonna be fast and simple too. Cabo fans, Zeke looking better, y'all. I ain't gonna even spend too much time on this. But see, we was able to be bougie last year. Don't come to me with that this year. The free agent running back class has basically been basically been wiped out. Right now, the Cowboys are just hoping that a team cut a quality running back. Right now, your potential RB1 could be Rico. Injury prone Rico. No. Mm -mm. You need something else back there, Dallas? Yep, you need something else back there. I think Zeke a free agent. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Y'all see y'all play too much. Y'all play too much. My boy say. He said, we got deuce, we good. But yeah. We got to get over the anger we have for Zeke because I'm just being honest if anybody had a problem with Zeke at his current pay at that time fine but if Zeke get paid what he got paid at New England that's a deal according to today's market and based on what you need and based on what you said Because didn't you say, am I tripping or didn't you say, Jerry, that you got to be able to run the ball and stop the run? That's what he said. So, where are we doing that? Where is that happening in your offseason so far? Because I don't see it forming. I don't see this run game just forming. I see it getting worse. Yeah, D block. I feel I still gotta put it out there though. My boss is Zig ain't coming back. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so I'm trying to prepare y'all for something, man. He says, Zeke can't get over two yards anymore. Drop the running back. All right, cool. All right, listen. I said this before. I'm going to say it one more time.
What does it say about the running back draft class to see all the better running backs taken so fast? I asked the same question with tackle. What does it say about tackle? What does it say about tackle to see Tyron Smith took so long? See y'all, listen here. Y'all get on my nerves with this. Stop it, Zeke is done, just let it go. This is my first time bringing up Zeke this whole off season. The first time. Like I've not said anything about Zeke this, this whole, uh, this is literally my first time bringing up Zeke. This whole off season, I've been talking about everybody but Zeke. I've been talking about Saquon, a better fit. Swift, a better fit. It shows that more so a lot of y'all stubborn when it comes to Z to where it don't matter what his price is. You just don't want him. So y'all go tell me that it's smart to go into next year with deuce rico that's what you're telling me next year we go go into with deuce rico and hunter that's what y'all want to rely on oh my god I'm going to say this again. Just draft a back. A back? All right. This, I'm going to say this again. It's a reason why all the free agent backs went out first. They looking at the draft class and they seeing it as womp womp. I said it before free agency. I said before free agency. I said I looked at the draft candidates. I looked at the free agents. The free agents are way better than the draft class. Yeah, you got about three to four, in my opinion, good running backs in the draft class. That would be good fits. Other than that, the draft class is trash. See, that theory that you can get any running back just draft a running back, bro. No, running backs got to have talent too. You don't just put a body back there, man. That's why the running backs went so fast because people that look at talent was like, I can't depend on them young dudes to be on this team. Let me go get a vet. I'd rather go pay more for a vet than to try to put them young dudes on this team and say we serious about winning. What's really going on is now, based on how we set up free agency, we getting ready to have to reach for running back. Now, guess what? We pretty much got to get a running back by the second round based on how we lined up right now in free agency. We have to, or we are in trouble. Yeah. So, yeah, I knew, I knew y'all was going to say it, but we got to take a look at it. See, it's other teams to work. Sometimes you leave, sometimes you come back. But with the Cowboys, no. No. All right, so let me take these Super Chats, man. And then uh, we'll take some calls.
And this is what I want people to do. Let's not do the draft a running back game. At this point, you need to start naming some names. It's too lazy to just say draft a running back. No, no, no. Show your work. I need to see your work. Show me the candidates. I want to know the specific candidates that you think we should get and win. See, that's what I see. We should be at that point now in the off season where you should be able to name some names. If you just still throwing out draft a running back without naming targets, like target rounds for specific ones. then we're not having a debate in good faith. And I want to have this de debate in good faith. I don't want to reach for ideas that's not even realistic. It's like, nah, tell me. Yeah. So like my boy Keystone, he say Braylon, Braylon Allen. Yeah, that's a good one. I like Braylon. Matter of fact, I love Braylon. I think Braylon would be a good fit for Dallas. I would be afraid for Braylon having big shoes thrust on him as a rookie because right now it would be massive shoes thrusted on him now if he was sharing the load i would be i love Brady. yeah he one of the four and i like this Mar marshawn lord round three i'm afraid for marshawn lord to be gone by round three but I think that's a good one too. I, matter of fact, I love Marshawn Ludd in round three. I gave him a swift comp. A swift comp. I, I see him as swift. Low tread, 4-4, speed. Also caught a lot out the backfield. Uh, seemed like he greatly fit the West Coast. So this is the good thing I'm liking. I'm liking that y'all naming names, but guess what? Y'all four is about the same as me. Y'all go name about four. I'm seeing it. Y'all, Trey Burton, Trey Benson, uh, Ray Davis. Yeah, Braylon Allen. Yeah, yeah, it's about the same four I have. So what's the odds of you getting them? Yeah, what's the odds of you getting them when other teams know this is a slim class? What's go? What do you think teams go do knowing it's not that many running backs? What they go likely do? Any team that think they need a running back, what they go do? They go get them. Especially in between round two and three, them running backs go run off. They go run off fast. Why? It's only about four or five that we all stamping. Like last year, we all had about eight to nine. Right. See, toxic. They, I toxic exactly. They go reach. Right. If it's only about three to four, because we all naming the same names. I saw y'all names is about the same as mine. If you need a running back, what you go do? You go reach. Why? Because you know, if I don't get them now, I ain't gonna have no chance to get them later. All right. So let me go to these super chats. Y'all give me one second. Hmm. 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 Let's go. <laughs> yeah, here we go. He said, the front office have changed their old odd ways. I'm sorry. I ain't saying it. Shake my head. Oh, they say they have to change. Yeah. Yeah, they do. Yeah, they gotta change, man. They gotta change. That's why, that's why honestly, we might. One of the best things that's gonna probably happen to us is lo losing Will McClay. Because as long as we got Will McClay, we gonna take it for granted. For real. We gonna take it for granted. Bro, you saying everything I was saying yesterday on X, being their ego, when you intentionally do people wrong, wrong will follow you. Yeah. 
that's what I sense is that billionaire ego. Yeah, I sense that. I do. I sense to where nobody, like, you don't have to share. You know what I'm saying? Can you imagine what it's like being a Jones where your whole life, everywhere you go, everybody caters to you just because of who your daddy is? Everywhere you go, you go to SMU and, oh, that's the Jones son. That's the Jones daughter. Let him sit in the front. You walk in the restaurant and everybody, everybody else, it's an hour wait. Oh, you're Jones Jr. Next table. Yeah, you don't know how to share when your whole life, everybody caters to you. It's all about your way because that's, all, that's how it's always been. See, Jerry, because he had to go get it, he had to share. But you could also tell Jerry struggled with sharing. Yeah. That's so true. Then Coach Maul said, he said, I wish they would let Will hire the coaches. Ooh. Ooh. As well, boss, to get the best out of the players he picks. I would trust his picks with coaches. Me too. That's a very good super check, coach. But but we likely not. But nah, I'm I'm afraid that we'll go get up out of here. I really am. Within the next three years, it's gonna shock us too. It's gonna shock the hell out of us. It's not gonna shock me. I'm gonna be like, yeah. I'm gonna be like, yeah. Like, why would you want to stay here, bro? You keep bailing them out with good free agents and they keep flushing your free agents down the commode. You go get Evans, they get rid of them for weed. You go get Amari, they get rid of them and don't even target them. You go get Fowler, they put them behind Armstrong. Yeah, see that's why Quinn got Bobby Wagner. Yeah, he been trying to get Bobby. He been trying to get Bobby for two years in a row. They was in direct talks, direct talks. Front office needed to spend just a little bit more money, just a little bit. Yeah, his cap hit was five million. You couldn't do that. You couldn't do that to give Quinn what he wanted. And then my last super chat, he said, we need Stephon Gilmore back. We do bad, but what is he a bastard? What do we do with bastards? We treat them with this thing. It's just what we do. And see, I just, I ask, join me in calling out the culture problem that we clearly have not even just getting free agents. It's how we treat them when they're here. So now nah, we finna get on these phones. Coach, call in. Piling paper, got them talking nice to me. Down the bottle, it be going right to me. Brown baby, trying to take a flight to me. They think that I'm stuck. It's like to me Piling paper got them talking nice to me Guess that's why the labels want the rights to me CD on my back and it feel like to me They think that I'm stunting but it's like to me That boy say piling paper got them talking nice to me mm. When you piling that paper people go talk a little bit nice to you I ain't gonna call you morons <laughs> Yeah Yeah, man, so we got the phone lines open. We got the phone lines open, y'all call on in. <clears throat> I'm just giving y'all my thoughts on what I slept on today. Uh, well, not slept on today, just basically slept on, period, you know? 
Because I'm always thinking, man, listen. I'm telling y'all something. I literally got like, I wrote it down this time. I got over 13 shows I can do this week. All of them totally different. My boy said, I'm ready to retire on these boys. Let's talk about this real quick before I get on these phones. Uh, Cabo Nation. I want to kind of talk to y'all a little bit. I was feeling like you last week, but Law Nation said something that I really needed to hear. Uh, I was a Cowboy fan before Jerry bought the team. A lot of y'all were. I don't think it's wise for us to throw away a life of fandom because of this hard road that we on right now. I think we just need to switch. Honestly, I think we need to switch. I think we just need to switch. Instead of being supportive fans, we need to be fans that's diligently called them out. It's almost like spanking your kid. None of us will ever want to spank our children, but you do it because you love them, which is another form of support. So we need to switch, in my opinion, to spanking the Cowboys, showing them and telling them where we are unhappy, where we feel like they can be better. Uh, don't walk away. Don't throw away all the years of investment that you have just because you see the entitlement and the stubbornness in high places. Support like you would your son. Whoop that ass. For real. You still loving the Cowboys by whooping them. So, that's what I'm on right now. Coach Moore, if you kicking us off. What's going on, boss, man? What's uh, up, Coach? You know, first of all, I want to say what you just talked about, man. Um, I've been, I've been, you know, I've been uh, very, uh, very hurt by how this organization is being run. And, you know, you, I, I got a little bit more insight uh, in the last couple of years by working with you and working with um, doing the shows and and being involved in the of all the news and, and with the YouTube and stuff and all that stuff. It got me a little bit more involved in of seeing the inner workings and it's not just looking at it from a from a distance, but getting a little closer to it. And yeah. it's and, and from the football to me it's kinda um it's sickening, but <laughs> like I said, you know, we we're cowboy fans. Um, I think what you're saying to the, the fan base is we got to be a little bit more realistic and humble because mm. um, we know that they they do things and they sell it to us like it's a big fantasy and they're not doing the the sound things and they, they get one player and they'll boost it up or they'll boost it all into the in the atmosphere and we'll go running with it and, and then we'll be our, our heart will be broken because they're not doing the underlying things that make it to make things solid. Yeah. So they're yeah, right. We need to be more, have our eyes open and be a little bit more humble and be um, realistic to see things and to call them call those things out and not live into the, the the Joneses fantasy world of trying to do things in a very unorthodox way because they they're doing it in a very unorthodox way in some cases. Um, but I am. I am pro build through the draft. I am poor. Uh, poor uh, I am a, a, a proponent of building through the draft. But I, it's you can't just do it in a way where you're trying to save money in all areas, um, and you can't just have one philosophy of trying to save money in all areas. And and the, and the sad thing to me is, boss. If you're gonna to try to build through the draft, why are you gonna to try to coach the team from the front office? I just can't understand why you don't get the best of the best where you don't have a salary cap and say, hey, we're gonna save money on players, but we're gonna have the best of the best of the people working for this team, and we're gonna get every free agent coach out there because we're gonna put them in a situation and pay them and, and give them the autonomy to do what they need to do 
and we'll save money on the other end and we can we probably can win but it's just that ego saying that I want to do it my way as well as I want to coach the team as well and I think that's our biggest problem is we got guys who are not football minds trying to orchestrate how guys should be coached and that that cannot that can that can't work because you can't play at Hollywood and then try to coddle some guys or try to make some guys good because you because you draft them. Right. So I would I would I would say that I just wanted to make one little instance. Um, two things. One, yes, I wish uh, Will McClay did have the autonomy to to hire the coaches mm-hmm. um, because I think I that would was a trust, good super chat, Coach. Um, Very good super chat. I would trust his. Because he, you know, and Will was a coach too, and he did very well when he was a Dallas. coach. I think he coached uh, in the USFL. Dallas Desperados. Because when I hear, right when I hear him talk, I know he's, you know, he is a guy that uh, talks about toughness, and you know. But I wish he was the guy that hired the coaches because if he was hired the coaches as well as he does the draft, he would get guys to fit, and that would be a perfect marriage of getting the groceries for the guys that he know that can deal with the guys that he's getting and work well with them. And then that can put a, a marriage between the coaches, the coaching and the and the draft uh, part where you can really get the best out of players and you can get the best out of players and you won't have to have um, whatever the player is, you can get the best out of them. Um, and I also want to say right quick, boss, Marshawn Lloyd, I love him, but he was a South Carolina guy too. He he's got the same injury history as Rico. Oh, uh, the reason what he, he came into he came into college with a knee uh, a, a towards ACL in, in high school. He sat out basically the first year of South Carolina, and he never had a full season at South Carolina. But when he does play, he's electric. Yeah. Um, and he was going to play for South Carolina that next year, but he decided to transfer to go to. Um, the other USC to play for the for the Trojans in um, with uh, with Ke- with Kayla Williams, and he had a good year, but he didn't have a many. He wasn't a workhorse. He, you know, as long as you can keep him not being a workhorse and and keep him away from the injury injury thing, he is electrifying. Yeah, but he does have an arthritic knee um, that they has given him some problems. He's had some injuries. But he's he's a very electrifying running back. But he's had uh, he's missed a lot of games. You check his his history at South Carolina, you'll see he has missed some ga- a lot of games. But when he's on the field, he's an awesome running back. So he's not a guy that you want to be. Say you want to get him in and say he's going to be a long term solution at a heavy uh, low running back. Um, because he he may get some nicks and bruises and miss some games as well, so he's not that that type of guy. So, uh, and I think we're gonna miss uh, like we 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 we, we killed Tony Pollard, but we got to miss Tony Pollard was there seventeen games, and the only time Tony Pollard missed a game in his in his career with the Cowboys, I think he missed a game uh, one time because of a foot. I mean, a, a planter two years ago, but when the bell rung. Tony Pollard was there. And so you're going to miss that type of guy. Um, But you can replace him with someone else. But I just think that we need to value the running game. And I hope our coaching staff values the running game. But it seems like to me, uh, McCarthy talked about that a lot the year before last season. But he... We carried the ball less with bigger leads. We still carried the ball less than we carried the previous two years. And we blew teams out. That shouldn't have not happened. We should have at least carried the ball the same amount of times when we had these blowout games. So I don't know his philosophy. Is he really committed to run the ball? Or no. is they, they He not. And, and 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 he might they might make a big splash with a receiver. And they make a big splash with a receiver. If they do this big splash receiver, they know if they do something with a receiver and get, let's say they get big, then they make a big. Everybody's gonna forget about Boston. Lord, gonna be everybody's gonna forget about the running game because they gonna feel, oh man, we got Lamb and, and Diggs. We don't even have to run the ball, and that's gonna be the detriment to Dak. 
into this team. And but and but they know the Cowboys up front office knows what they know what Boots' fans morale. If they get a big time receiver, they will they'll just go whatever they got in the run game because they know the Cowboy fans don't really don't really want to run the ball anyway. Nope. They'll be like, oh man, we'll be we'll be that'll be it. We got two wide receivers now. We can throw the ball. We don't really have to run the ball. And then the same thing will good happen like happened last year and happened at the end of this year. We'll be talking about the first part of off season. Man, we need to run the ball more. Same conversation for the last couple of years. Same conversation now, but we don't believe in it. And we as Cowboys Nation have to come to grips and believe in it. And maybe that might transfer to our organization and to our head coach to be committed to it. Appreciate it, boss. Keep right, doing coach. great work, brother. All right, thanks, coach. That was Coach Moore. 409, you live. 409, you live. Hey, what's going on, boss? Hey, what's up? Who is this? This uh, is D shit, bro. What's up, D? Nah, not much, man. It's been a little minute. Uh, been, man, just been sitting back observing. Uh, but I'm, I'm fully with you when it comes to one thing. Um, you know, um, I ain't gonna lie, boss. When you first came out, I was like, man, this dude here, man, this, he always negative. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, bro. <laughs> but as you go on and on, and as we go on through these journeys, I've been like, man, damn, boss, hit on that. You hit on that. Yeah, I me mean, hit on that. Wait, hold on. He, nah. So. <laughs> I mean, it was, it was you last. It was last year? I forgot what the main, the 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 main positions we were looking at in the draft. But you was man, you 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 were the first one to put the red alarm on the linebacking position, the situation, and the running back. I don't say the running back, but that was another position. No, yeah, it was. You you was you was you were like, hold on, yeah, everybody, you know, happy that we got uh, let let go of Zeke. And so, man, the Cowboys, I think, they, they just look at teams and they look at the personnel changes they make and the things they do. But I, I, I don't think they understand how to execute these things, right? I think they're, they're looking at the, the Chiefs and the, the Niners switching through in and out and running back. And I get it. You, you ain't got to pay mm. for it. But, like, if you don't have the plan and mm. they, they try to do the thing with two tight ends, right? You remember when the Patriots were winning with two tight ends mm. with Gronk and uh, Hernandez? And so they go Witten and they try to boom. They try to get another dude and they, they go to Bennett for, uh, was it Tosano? I mean, they, they try to execute that. You know, they try to win that way. And I don't, and that just goes back to the football guy thing, man. Like, these are actual football guys putting these things together and actually executing these things. And so it's, I don't know, it's, it's lazy work to me on their part. And that's why I always feel like we have to like go ahead and just put something together that's going to be dominant. Like, yeah, the 49ers, they can win with a one all pro left tackle and a whole bunch of guys on, on the right side of them. But we not the 49 Right. And so, and so that's why I always feel like, man, you got to soup up the offensive line. Like, you got to soup up things around Zach. And I mean, you think about the 49ers, pound for pound, they had like, more all pros on their team, I feel like, or pro bowlers than the Chiefs did. But if they couldn't even, you know, knock out the Chiefs with the roster they had, like, because you take quarterbacks out, roster to roster, I feel like the Niners had a better roster than the Chiefs. Yeah. And, and, so and we that game that played out like home. that, too. The game played out like that. Like, San Fran was driving, they just was making mistakes. And then when their big guys start making mistakes that, that, you know, they lost their edge with that. Yep. And so when it just came quarterback to quarterback, well, you know who's going to win that. But, man, uh, hmm. good, good stuff, boss, bro. I'll, I'll let you get to your other callers, man. And, uh, man, we appreciate everything you do, though. Man, appreciate it, D. Appreciate it. My boy D. Schiff, man. And he telling the truth, man. I had a nice little reputation of being negative. You know, I called big yesterday. He ain't pick up, but I call him because I want to just tell him, bro. This is our time. 
My boy Big had over 300 some people watching him the other day. Uh, and I, I told Amp this. I said, people don't really go to my channel for entertainment. They don't go to my channel because they want to feel better. They go to my channel because they want answers. You want answers? And so when times are good, I'm not a favorite channel because I'm still going to be talking about things that could cause us to lose, which comes across as negative. You know, um, well, others going to be talking about just everything that's good, you know, but like over time, like my boy D shift said, if you watch me long enough, you watch big and I'm long enough, you gonna know we mean well. And sometimes we just warning against things that we think go hurt us from winning. That's all, you know? So, you know, it's not easy to, either because y'all pressure us to be positive. Like I had somebody text me, boss, let it play out. I said, nah, if I, if I feel like I see somebody headed towards a cliff, I'm going to say something. If you blindfolded and you walk towards the cliff, if I got to tackle you, yeah, that hurt you, but I saved your life. I'm going to risk hurting you. So and some people, they don't understand that that's the spirit I come from. And that's the spirit that big come from is we're choosing to say the things that's hard to say that y'all don't want to hear sometime but for the purpose of trying to win a championship so i ain't gonna change on that i'm gonna stay i'm gonna stay with that dp you closing us out man what's up bro what's going on oh man you know i had to come in and, and jump on real quick with these numbers I keep seeing everybody talking about, uh, is this a rebuild? Is this a rebuild? And I've been asking other content creators, what's your definition of a rebuild? And they keep saying, well, when you blow it up. And I say, well, our last head coach name was Jason Garrett. We only got three of his players left. What do you mean? Are we going to rebuild the team? Hmm. It's already been rebuilt. Now, the, here's the problem. The, Stephen Jones is determined to try to have 53 rookie contracts in yep. roster. But, bro, on, on an average year, you only get seven draft picks, which means it takes you eight years to draft 50 players. <laughs> so that slide you'll never work without free agency. Mm. And that's why we can't ever get all our holes filled. Right. I'm tired of getting arguments with, 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 with Dak haters who all want to sit there and point fingers at Dak. And, and I keep on asking, well, Dak was losing – when he stepped on the field in the playoff. Right. Like, they keep on saying, well, Patrick Mahomes and old boy had the shootout. I said, bro, a shootout means two defenses that couldn't get stops. Right. <laughs> and for a quarterback to make a comeback, it means his defense was getting stops. They was working together. Right. Right. Now, I mean, it can't all be on one player. It all has to be a complete roster to win championships. And I agree with you for wholeheartedly. It makes no sense that the richest, most worthy uh, franchise in all the sports refuse to pay for coaches. Yeah. Now, I mean, like, if you want to develop a coach, that's cool. Make him a quality control assistant. Right. You know, let, let him be a gopher and run around underneath some dudes and learn the ins and the outs. You don't put him in charge of a whole room. You damn sure don't put him in charge of a room of a position he's never played. Right. Know what I mean? Yeah. It's common sense the things that's going wrong, but it's Steven's way. Yeah, it's his way. And until and, and, and if his daddy ain't gonna do it, 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 it he'll never get checked, bro. We just gonna have to suck it up and accept it. Know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It's like and just call him like, out uh, and just keep calling him out. Saying. They gotta be able to overcome the culture. We gotta call him out, otherwise players gotta overcome culture. Right. That's that. That's the formula. Perfect. This is what you said. Perfect. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, dude. That's all I really had, though. That's all I really had, though, today, boss. Other than, uh, now I mean, I want to I wanna give a shout-out to some of the players that left because some of y'all didn't really get 
y'all uh y'all y'all chance to be all that y'all wanted to be. I hope y'all get that shot now. I'm not hating on none of you. You know what I mean? You yeah. bang your head up against the wall for high entertainment. I'm not mad at you for doing something for you and your family. Period. Period. Know what I mean? That's it. That's all I got today. All right, man. Appreciate it, DP. OG DP, right, man. That was DP, man. So, uh, so obviously, man, I slept on it. And, uh, you know, basically it's pretty simple. <clears throat> we have a disdain for free agents. But they are betting on the red shirts. That's what they're doing. They, they've they already drafted to replace these guys, most of them, last year, right? So we will have to sit back and see how most of this play out. Uh, you know, my gut says that it's going to be about 50-50. It's going to be some people that's going to step up. But the more people that step up, the better. I really, 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 really want them to be right and all of us to be wrong because what if Fioku step up and he end up being way better than Armstrong and Fowler what if Sam Williams have that same success what if it is not far far fetched to see one yay Thompson Thomas likely being better than Kirsch right now I think it's a reach to say that Brock Hoffman is going to be better, but we can see. I don't think he's going to be better. Uh, but if he can be serviceable, I still take that in that loss. Most of us will say that Mozzie Smith has more upside than Neville Gallimore. We're going to see more Mozzie. The running back looked real iffy. It's looking committee-ish with some very, very green guys back there. Running back looks like it would have to grow up real fast. Or you got to consider some vets somewhere to take the pressure off that young running back room and Dak. I don't see why Dak would invest being team friendly. To an organization that are already said, our version of All In is not even doing anything in free agency. It's just paying our guys. So, the worst part that I took away, man, that makes me sick to my stomach, is the, 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 the disdain for free agents. And I really, really want that to take off. That topic is too quiet. Like how many times he going to show you that it's not even about the lack of attempts in week one. It's the looking down his nose at it. Even Derrick Henry was like, I don't know what they doing over there. In other words, I done got a call from everybody but Dallas. Who do y'all think y'all are to where y'all don't even call? What did they say earlier? It was a phone call where everybody knew who this free agent was. And Steven was like, who? Nah, he knew who it was. It's just that when it comes down to his guys, to his drafted preciouses, to his way of building when he see free agents it don't matter if it's Amari it don't even matter if it worked it don't even matter if it was a man them free agents helped us out he gonna still want to return right back to our guys so like D-Shift said in an environment like this, and DP Johnson said, you got to win despite them. Boss Cowboy Sports, where your voice matters.
Yeah, moving too bossy, ah. We don't tread softly, ah. But not flossy, ah. The streets ain't taught me, ah. Moving too bossy, ah. We don't tread softly, ah. But not flossy, ah. The streets ain't taught me, ah. I'm just tryna get my neck paid. We came from Section A, and I knew I was a since the second grade. Man, I swear my time is coming, cause I'm never late. Came from broken homes and broken dreams to get it paid. Love, dollar, dollar, dollar bill, uh, listen close, this is not a drill Cause hungry trying to get a meal, I've been in light, who gon' pay a bill? I've been in action, been attraction, uh, surplus with niggas lacking, uh Shining light, but still we blacking, uh, red lights will stop the action, uh Green to go, even when it's slow, higher heights to balance out the lows Can't ride the wave cause you 